писать, и фотографировать, и снимать, и, и в космос летать. То есть у нас такая универсальная задача. Вот, поэтому вам мы желаем успешно дописать свое исследование и Спасибо. учититься. Да, если вдруг вы да, захотите с нами пообщаться, мы с удовольствием всегда рады. Если у нас какие-то вопросы будут связаны именно с журналистикой. Хорошо, спасибо Я большое. Не задерживать, да, вы можете да, послушать какую-нибудь по филологии лекцию. Спасибо. спасибо, всего доброго вам. Да, спасибо. мы вас слушаем. Окей. Okay. Да. Окей. Okay. Окей. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Professor Olga and Uh, all the academicians, I can understand, though we are three persons in this conference room, sessions going on in other rooms, and there are nearly uh, 500 to 700 participants as per the program I was sent yesterday by Professor Olga. Thank you very much for inviting me here, professors, vice rector, scholars, students, academics, whosoever is available in this session. I want to tell you that Russia And India share a historic relation. India, that is Bharat, is a country that I represent. And I'm also three-time winner of Russian Government Fellowship in 2021, 2020-2021, 2021-2022. 2022 and 2023 and currently I am pursuing it at Ural Federal University at Tarinba. This conference organized by Faculty of Linguistics and Journalism is dedicated to various aspects of linguistics and that is how I have selected world's oldest language, Sanskrit, and to speak on that in this session, I am just coming out of another session where I have presented another paper. So thank you very much for giving me opportunity to speak. I will speak, I will start my research paper with two lines of Sanskrit hymns. Vagartha viva sampraktho, Vagartha pratipattaye, Jagataha pitaro vande, Parvati parmeshwara. The title of my paper is Parini and Devabhasha. Sanskritam, or for short Sanskrit, or Sanskrita walk is an ancient sacred language of Bharatvars that also can be referred as mother of many other languages. That is the language of Hinduism and Veda and is the classical literary language of India. The name Sanskrit means refined, consecrated and sanctified. It has always been regarded as the high language and used mainly for the religious and scientific discourse. There are still hundreds of millions of people who use Sanskrit in their daily lives. But despite these numbers, its cultural worth is unsurpassed. The language name Sanskritam is derived from the past participle Sanskrita self-made or self-done of the verb sanskara, to make self, where some with together self and kar do make in modern languages the verbal adjective sanskrita has come to mean culture or civilized. 
the language referred to as sanskrit walk the language of culture has by definition always been a high language used for religious and learned discourses etc is explained as ordered rules operating on underlying structures in a manner similar to modern theory in many ways panini's construction are similar to the way that a mathematical function is defined today so we can frankly say that sanskrit is also a computer friendly scientific and mathematical language in this research paper my objective is to prove sanskrit as oldest known language it is considered to the very origin of language itself the from the from which <coughs> all languages have arisen or evolved the vedas the universally accepted first scriptures of humanity were written in the sanskrit language <coughs> The objective of research paper is to understand one of the oldest and finest languages in the world as a foundation to human speech communication. The study is based on basic objectives of Sanskrit grammar, and it's one of the foundation grammarian, Parini, who gave us more than 3,000 sutras or formulas of Sanskrit, and that is why I say Sanskrit is. world's most computer friendly scientific and mathematical languages which is also very useful in artificial intelligence the objective deals with analyzing the language to its oldest form and until uh, it is adopted now the paper aims on analyzing the work and life of parini who gave organized the foundation to the sanskrit as a medium of speech communication world for more than 3 millennia sanskrit was the lingua franca of the indian subcontinent the language of science knowledge spirituality and culture sanskrit is the common language of the hindu scriptures and it is language of vedas upanishads bhagavad gita mahabharata ramayana and purana sanskrit literature is easily the richest literature in the history of mankind the word sanskrit literally means perfected language or language is brought to formal perfection this is quite an appropriate name since nasa declared it to be the only unambiguous language on the planet recently well known linguists and computer scientists have exp- expressed the opinion that sanskrit is the best language for use of computers and artificial intelligence sanskrit the various other indian and southeast asian languages uses a devanagari alphabet the vedic tradition informs us that human being in former ages were physically and intellectually by far, far more able than nowadays knowledge was passed by one generation to another by oral reception since the disciples were able to remember everything by hearing it once thus no writing was necessary but at the dawn of the present age the kali yuga or age of quarrel human mankind regarded more and more and gradually lost all good quality the duration of life decreased and with the loss of the keen remembrance the traditional system of acquiring knowledge ceased to be applicable in order to prevent its decay the vedic wisdom had to be conserved in written form parini is known for the sanskrit grammar particularly for his formulation of the 3959 rules of sanskrit morphology syntax and semantics in the grammar known as ashtadhyayi the foundation text of the grammatical branch of vedanga the auxiliary scholarly disciplines of vedic religion The Astadhyayi of Parini is one of the earliest known grammars of Sanskrit. Although Parini prefers to previous texts like Unadi Sutra, 
धतुपाद था एंड गणपथा इट इज द अर्लीस्ट स्टोन वर्क ऑन डिस्क्रिप्टिव लिंग्विस्टिक एंड टूगेदर विद द वर्क ऑफ इमीडिएट प्रिडिसेसर निरोक्ता निघांतु प्रतीक्षात्या स्टैंड एट द बेगिनिंग ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक इट सेल्फ his theory of morphological analysis was more advanced than any other equivalent western theory before the mid 20th century and his analysis of noun compounds still forms the basis of modern linguistic theories of compounding which has which have borrowed sanskrit terms such as bhuruvi dwandva parnish comprehensive and scientific theory of grammar is conventionally taken to mark to the end of period of vedic sanskrit so by definition introducing classical sanskrit the parni grammar defines classical sanskrit so parni by definition lived at the end of the vedic period he notes a few special role marked chandasi in the hymns to account for forms in the vedic scriptures that had fallen out of use in the spoken language of his time <coughs> these indicate the vedic sanskrit was already archaic but still a comprehensively dialect an important hint for the dating of parini is occurrence of the word yuanani in 4149 either greek women or greek script some greek such as persian admiral skylax of karyanda were present in gandhara as a co citizen of persian empire well before the conqueror con- conquest of alexander the great in the 330 bc the name could also have been transmitted via old persian yona and the administrative language elimite or armenic so that the occurrence of yuvani taken in the isolation allows for a terminus postquem as early as 519 bc that is the time of da- darujus the great bestun beh- beh- inscription that includes the indian province of gandhara it is not certain whether parini used writing for the composition of his work now it is generally agreed that he knew of a form of writing based on references to the words such as script and scribe in his ashtadhyay these must have referred to armenic or early khorasti writing it is believed by some that work of such complexity would have been difficult to compile without written notes while parini work is purely geometrical and lexicographic cultural and geographical interference can be drawn from the vocabulary he uses in complexes and and from his references to fellow grammarian which so he was a north western person new deities referred to in his work include vasudeva the concept of dharma is attested in his example sentences The Astadhyay is one of the earliest stone grammar of Sanskrit. Although Panini refers to previous texts like the Unadi Sutra, Dhatu Patha, and Gana Patha, it is the earliest stone work as descriptive linguistic. Panini's comprehensive and scientific theory of grammar is conventionally taken to the mark the end of the period of Vedic Sanskrit. So, by definition, introducing classical sanskrit dashtadhyay is the central part of parini's grammar grammar and the rigveda are the only texts that were passed from one generation to another without being amended in the astadhyay of parini language is observed in a manner that has no parallel among greek or latin grammarian parini's grammar marks the entity of the non sacred into indian thought and according to renau and philujat it then defies the linguistic expression of that thought the great thinker of ancient india were primarily linguists it is not possible to understand fully the works of philosophers such as shankara ramanuja 
and Madhva without a knowledge of Parini. The Stadhya is fundamental to the structure of their thinking. Parini made use of a technical meta language consisting of a syntax, morphology, and lexicon. The meta language is organized according to the series of meta rules, some of which are explicitly stated, which others can be deduced. The study consists of 3,959 sutra or rules distributed among eight chapters, which are each subdivided into four sections or pada. From example, words in text and from a new rules depending on the context of the discourse, additional information as to geographical, cultural and historical context of Parini can be discerned. So this is all I wanted to present before all of you. My conclusion of this paper is as far as we know, Parini produced only one work and later that was amended and explained by his followers. So, Parini, Jastabhyayi, Puranas and other scriptures prove that these 3,959 uh, rules of Parini, which is called Suktas, prove that Sanskrit is grammatically fit, enriched, scientific, mathematical, computer-friendly, and also what we talk in today's time, artificial intelligence, friendly language. That is all I wanted to present before all of you, scholars, vice rector, rector, professors, academics, and the organizer. My special thanks to Professor Olga, who invited me especially to present two research papers in this, in this lengthy conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ratnesh. Uh, very interesting report. Thank you. Thank you. Следующим к выступлению приглашается знак Юлия Эдуардовна, кандидат филологических наук, доцент кафедры английского языка. Тема выступления лингвистически релевантные характеристики новых типов межгосударственных конфликтов, смысловой сдвиг или новая реальность. Юлия Эдуардовна, здравствуйте. Здравствуйте, дорогие коллеги. Меня слышно? Да. да. Очень хорошо. Сейчас я попробую настроить демонстрацию экрана. Одну минутку. Так, сейчас. Извините, сейчас. Так, мне нужно... Сейчас прошу прощения, я вывела себе презентацию уже на экран. Сейчас я тогда по-другому это сделаю. Хорошо, ждем. Так. Mm -hmm. 